In this video, we're going to work through an example of the hypervolume indicator. If you want to learn more, you can watch my longer videos on evolutionary algorithms, multi objective problems, and the hypervolume indicator. Here we have solution sets from two made up algorithms named Alphonse and Edward. A quick reminder that we're doing minimization, so smaller objective values are better. So the closer the solutions are to the bottom left of our plots, the better they are. We can see by eye that Alphonse has achieved better proximity in its solution set, so all solutions offer better objective values. In fact, if we lay the figures on top of each other, we can see that there are no car designs produced by algorithm Edward that perform better in speed or price regardless of the trade-offs. This means the solution set produced by algorithm Alphonse completely dominates the solution set produced by algorithm Edward. This was simple enough, but let's have a look at an algorithm called Cornello. When comparing Cornello to Alphonse, it's difficult to tell which set of solutions is better. It certainly isn't as easy as it was when comparing to Edward. Let's have a closer look. When you lay them on top of each other, it's clear that some solutions produced by algorithm Alphonse are better than those of algorithm Cornello, but then some solutions produced by algorithm Cornello are better than those of algorithm Alphonse. Besides this difficulty, it's often not feasible to try to score every solution set with human intervention, as this may need to happen thousands of times. For that reason, it's desirable to have an automated approach. This is where performance indicators, or the hypervolume indicator in this case, are useful, because they can give you a single score to indicate the quality of a set of solutions depending on different measures. And then this score can be used to compare many solution sets from different algorithms. Here we can see unrelated visualizations of the hypervolume indicator. It can score a set of solutions by using the solutions, the intersecting points, and an additionally selected reference point to form an n-dimensional polytope. In more than three dimensions, the volume of this polytope is referred to as the hypervolume. In three dimensions, it's simply the volume, and in two dimensions, it's simply the area. However, we will continue with examples consisting of two or three objectives simply because it's too difficult to intuitively illustrate in four or more dimensions. Let's revisit the solutions generated by our two algorithms. We will outline what is calculated as the hypervolume indicator, which is actually the 2D area as we mentioned earlier. The shaded area also indicates the objective space which is dominated by the solution sets. This is all according to a mutual reference point indicated with a white marker in the top right. If we overlay the shaded areas which visualize the dominated objective space, we can see that besides the area that is covered by both Alphonse and Cornello, Cornello exclusively covers more area than Alphonse. That is, there is more yellow than there is blue. This means that according to the hypervolume indicator, Cornello has produced the better performing solution set. The hypervolume indicator is quantified as a scalar value, where greater values indicate a better result. Now you can see the hypervolume indicator values calculated for each solution set, confirming that Cornello has the better performing solution set. It's extremely important to select identical reference points when comparing two or more solution sets. In this example, you can see I've selected two different reference points when comparing identical solution sets. Reference points of 140 by 140 for the left and 120 by 120 for the right. Cornello compared to Cornello. However, because the reference points are different, the calculated hypervolumes are also different and not comparable. According to these results, 
Cornello has outperformed Cornello, despite the solution sets being the same. If you want to learn more, you can watch my longer videos on evolutionary algorithms, multi-objective problems, and the hypervolume indicator.